Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your instructor for this Azure Administrator Associate AZ-104 Certification Examination course. We are in Module 7 right now, which is all about Azure Storage. And in this video, we're going to talk about Blob Storage. Let's have a look at the things what we are going to learn on this lesson. We will start with what is Blob Storage? What what do you mean by a blob container? And what are the different access tiers available within blob? And how do you take care of the blob storage? And what is the management look like? And how can you upload and download and manipulate files within a blob storage? And what about the pricing for these blob storage? So when I explain about these concepts, I will take you back and forth the portal and the presentation so that it makes sense to you what I'm talking about. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. A blob storage is a service that stores unstructured data in the cloud as objects or blobs. A blob storage can store any type of text or binary data such as documents, media file or application installer. And blob storage is also referred as an object storage. Some of the common use cases of blob storage are serving images or documents directly to your browser, storing files for a distributed access such as installation, streaming video and audio, storing data for backup and restore and disaster recovery and archiving, and storing data for analysis by an on-premises or Azure hosted service. And the blob storage offers three types of resources. The storage account, the container in the storage account, and the blobs in the container. This following diagram shows the relationship between these resources. So please note that within the storage account, you can group as many blobs as you needed in a container. So before I dive deep into containers, let me quickly show you how to create a blob container in the Azure portal. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go to storage account. Even though I have multiple storage account, I'm going to create a brand new storage account for this demonstration. Click on add a new storage account. Make sure you select the right subscription and create a new resource group or select an existing resource group. I'm going to select an existing resource group and I'm going to give a name to my storage account and I'm going to pick Australia East as my region. I'm going to keep the performance as standard and the kind as general purpose V2 because that's the most recommended storage account kind which you should be using for any sort of general purpose. And for the replication, even though we learned about different replications available, to keep the cost down, I'm going to select as locally redundant storage or LRS. And the type or the tier of the blob, I'm going to choose it as hot. Don't worry, I will talk about the different tiers available in the next session. Right now, I'm going to leave it as hot. I'm not going to modify anything on networking or any, any other components. I'm going to hit on review and create. The validation has been passed. Hit on create. The storage account creation won't take much time. A storage account will create within a minute or so. Looks like my storage account has been completed. I'm going to click on go to resource. Now that I have created my storage account, as you can see that there are different kinds of storage we can create. I'm going to go to the blob storage, which is containers and click on create new container to create your first container. A container provide a grouping of set of blobs. All blob must be in a container. An account can contain an unlimited number of containers. A container can store an unlimited number of blobs as well. When you create a container, just simply give a name. So when you select a name, a name may only contain lowercase letters, numbers and hyphens and must begin with a letter or a number. The name must also be between 3 to 63 characters long. Then comes the public access level. 
there are three levels private blob and container this public access level specifies whether data in the container may be accessed publicly or not by default container data is private to the account owner so what is private use private to ensure there is no anonymous access to the container and blob and use blob to allow anonymous and public read access to the blob only and use container to allow anonymous public read and list access to the entire container including the blobs so i'm going to keep it as private no anonymous access and hit on create while that is happening please note that you can also create the blob container with powershell using new dash az storage container command i have my blob created now so let's understand what is blob access tiers if you remember last time when we were creating the blob container there was a tier section which i just ignored and selected hot so let me go back and tell you what is this access tier all about I'm going to go back to the storage account and create a sample storage account so that you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to fill in all the details. We have done that. But if you look at this, I'm going to select it to blob storage so that you see all the options. So I'm going to leave all the details by default so that you know all, so you know what I'm talking about. So I just want you to focus on blob access tier. By default, it is hot. You can change the access tier. The Azure storage provide different options for accessing block blob data based on the usage patterns. Each access tier in Azure storage is optimized for a particular pattern of data usage. By selecting the correct access tier for your need, you can store your block blob data in the most cost effective manner. So you have three options. I know that you can only see two. In general, there are three options, hot, cool, and archive. So let me explain what is hot. A hot tier is optimized for frequent access of objects in the storage account. Accessing data in the hot tier is most cost effective. While storage cost is somewhat higher, new storage accounts are created in the hot tier by default. The second tier is called cool tier. The cool tier is optimized for storing large amount of data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days. Storing data in the cool tier is the most cost effective, but accessing that data may be somewhat more expensive than accessing data in the hot tier. And the third option is archive. The archive tier is the most cost effective option for storing data. But accessing that data is more expensive than accessing data in the hot or cool tiers. Please note that if there is a change in usage pattern of your data, you can switch between these access tiers at any time. Let's understand the blob lifecycle management. Data sets have unique life cycle. Early in the life cycle, people access some data often, but the need for access drops drastically as the data ages. Some data stays idle in the cloud and is rarely accessed once stored. Some data expires days or months after creation, while other data sets are actively read and modified throughout their lifetimes. Azure Blob Storage Lifecycle Management offers a rich rule-based policy for general purpose V2 and blob storage accounts. Use the policy to transition your data to the appropriate access tier or expire at the end of the data's lifecycle. So let me show you where you can add this rule in the lifecycle management. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go back to my storage account I created for this scenario. And under settings, or no, under blob service, go to lifecycle management. As you can see that I don't have any lifecycle management rule created so far. 
click on add a rule this is where you can add a new rule for your lifecycle management the lifecycle management policy lets you transition blobs to a cooler storage tier to optimize for performance and cost and this lets you delete blobs at the end of the life cycle as well and you would be able to define rules to be run once per day at the storage account level and you would be able to apply rules to containers or a subset of blobs so how do you upload blobs a blob can be any type and size file azure storage offers three types of blobs block blobs page blobs and append blobs you specify the blob type and access tier when you create the blob so let me show you how you can upload files to the blob storage and how you can find the blob type i'm on my azure portal select the same storage account we created i'm going to scroll down to blob service and click on containers and this is the sample container we created for this demo and if you notice the access level is set to private i can always go and modify and change the access level whenever i want i'm going to keep it by default let's click on upload let's open up another tab where i can select the file which i like to upload from my local computer but for this topic i'm going to select advanced and this give me the type of blob i am trying to upload there are three types block blob page blob and append blob block blobs are the default one which consists of blocks of data assembled to make a blob most scenarios use blob storage employ block blobs and block blobs are ideal for storing text and binary data in the cloud like files images and videos The second option is page blob. Page blob can be up to 8 terabytes in size and are more efficient for frequent read write operations. Azure virtual machines use page blobs as OS and data disk. And the third kind is called append blobs. Append blobs are like block blobs in that they are made up of blocks. but they are optimized for append operations so they are useful for logging scenarios now we have learned about how to create blob files and what are the different types and access tiers within the blob storage let's learn about what are the ways you can upload files to blob storage there are multiple methods to upload data to blob storage including AZ copies storage data movement library blob fuse and import export so let me give you a high level view on what this is so that you are aware of these tools the first one is az copy az copy is an easy to use command line tool for windows and linux that copies data to and from blob storage across containers or across storage accounts Then we have the Azure Storage Data Movement Library is a .NET library for moving data between Azure storage services. The AZ Copy utility is built with the Data Movement Library. Then we have Azure Data Factory which supports copying data to and from blob storage by using account key, shared access signature, service principal or managed identities for azure resources authentications the fourth option is blob fuse so blob fuse is a virtual file system driver for azure blob storage you can use blob fuse to access your existing block blob data in your storage account through the linux file system the next option is azure data box disk This is a service for transferring on-premises data to blob storage when large data sets or network constraints make uploading data over the wire unrealistic. You can use Azure Data Box Disk to request solid state disk SSDs from Microsoft. You can then copy your data to those disk and ship them back to Microsoft to be uploaded 
into blob storage and the last one is azure import export azure import export service provide a way to export large amount of data from your storage account to the hard drive that you provide and that microsoft then ships back to you with your data once the copy is being done and of course you can always use azure storage explorer as well Let's understand the blob storage pricing before we move into the next topic. All storage accounts use a pricing model for blob storage based on the tier of each blob. When using a storage account, the following billing considerations apply. Performance tier. In addition to the amount of data stored, the cost of storing data varies depending on the storage tier. The per gigabyte cost decreases as the tier gets cooler. Then we have data access cost. Data access charges increase as the tier gets cooler. For data in the cool and archive storage tier, you are charged a per gigabyte data access charge for reads. Then there is transaction cost. There is a per transaction charge for all tiers that increases as the tier gets cooler. Then there is geo replication data transfer cost as well. This charge only applies to accounts with GeoReplication configured, including GRS and RAGRS. GeoReplication data transfer requires a per gigabyte charge. Then there is additional outbound data transfer cost as well. Outbound data transfer, which is data that is transferred out of Azure region, incur billing for bandwidth usage on per gigabyte basis, consists with general purpose storage accounts. All right, so that concludes the lesson on blob storage. In the next video, we're going to talk about storage security. We are still on module seven, which is all about Azure storage. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.